and welcome to effective communication session of ml marriage fitness so you understand the communication is very important that's the lifeblood of any relationship without communication no relationship communication stirs up makes the relationship possible and also to flourish uh, Bible says that a gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. Uh, that means that um, your words have the power to change emotions. You, there's a way you can say something that it, it will be bought. There's a way you can say it that instead of people accepting to do what you want, they will resist you. In It is in the best interest, it's in our best interest, that we influence others by how we speak and we influence them positively. So effective communication is about positive and effective way to influence others. So there's a way to enhance your communication skills in a Christian marriage. If effective communication is fundamental to building and maintaining a strong, healthy marriage, that is grounded on Christian principles. There are good reasons for communications to solve a problem, to build intimacy, to meet our needs, and to meet our spouse's needs. Now, bad reasons for communicating is to attack and give you a peace of mind. Sometimes it is said if you don't have anything to say positive, you don't say it. So another wrong way of communicating is to tear down your spouse, to complain, nag. Manip and manipulate others are very wrong reasons for communication. So communication is very important in marriage because it is um, foundational, fosters understanding, trust, intimacy, and connection between the spouses. In Christian marriage, communication is essential for spiritual growth, unity, fulfilling God's purpose for the marriage. Now, scripture encourages open, honest, and loving communication between spouses. As Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29 says, Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen to you. Proverbs 15, one says, A gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. We will always want to turn away any wrath and to bring, to be the peace and the solution in the So the effective ways to communicate is actively listening, being open and honest. You communicate with respect and kindness. You also communicate with clarity and precision. You communicate with timing and setting. You have nonverbal communication, patience and empathy. <clears throat> also, another effective way of doing it is through prayer. Invite God into your communication. Seek his guidance, wisdom, and grace to communicate effectively to resolve conflict. So some common communication pitfalls is criticism, defensiveness, mauling, contempt, and assuming that somebody will read your mind. So never be someone who criticizes. Your opponent try to explain your point without criticizing defensiveness stop defending yourself receive the feedback if necessary and accept to change stonewalling is stopping to communicate altogether being withdrawn never do that if you want to solve any problem and then contempt is regarding the other person as not important and the opinion not necessary and feeling the audacity to say to tell them anything and to reprimand them like a child that is a love killer number one also assuming that your partner can read your mind you see it's a wrong assumption about your parts your partner's thoughts salutations always seek for clarification so there are more other effective and 
beneficial ways to communicate. One is reflective listening. This is to ensure that you have understanding. You listen and reflect on what you have heard before you respond. Always use the statement I to express your feelings and needs without blaming or accusing your spouse. Say I didn't feel well when I missed to find you where at the time we had agreed instead of you always get late. So you're one person is accusing the partner for being late and being disorganized, not caring. The other party is expressing how they feel. Always say, I feel like this. I feel like this. To make the other party try to self-correct if they have empathy. The assumption is that your partner loves you, cares enough, and if they can understand how you, what they do affects you, they are going to change. So... In, in conflict resolution, always use a structured approach to resolving conflict, such as active listening and identifying underlying issues, brainstorming solutions, and seeking compromise. See, so always have the three things together. The four things, listen actively first, identify the underlying issues, brainstorm, and then seek compromise. Do weekly check-in, set aside time each week to check with your spouse, discussing any concerns, victories, or challenges in their marriage. Pray together, incorporate prayer <clears throat> into your communication routine. Praying together guarantees unity, strength in your marriage. So effective communication in conclusion is, in conclusion, is essential for nurturing a strong, healthy, and God-centered marriage. By applying biblical principles and practical communication skills, Couples can deepen their connection, resolve conflicts, and grow closer to each other and to God. God bless your marriage with love, joy, and harmony through effective communication. God bless you so much. Unless there's any questions, we can fill some questions. <clears throat>